Make-A-Wish employees. What was the strangest thing a Make-A-Wish kid asked for and actually received? I got a wish when I was eight. Was a massive wrestling fan at the time, and I used to watch it when I was in the hospital as they had Foxtel, Australian cable. Anyway, I wished for Foxtel to watch wrestling. It took a few months, but eventually it got granted. Free Foxtel with all channels plus PPVs until I turned 16. Plus, the biggest TV on the market back then. They forgot to ever turn off the free Foxtel. Now, I'm 30. Story 3. I was a Black Hawk pilot in the army, and we had a Make-A-Wish kid who wanted to fly in an army helicopter. We had to remove all the seats so we could strap his wheelchair down in the middle of the helicopter, and we flew him around at treetop level, yanking and banking with all the doors open for a while. Story 4. After I survived cancer at 17, I was offered a wish. I went to Christmas Island with my family to see the spawning of the red crabs, reckoned to be one of the seven natural wonders of the world. Picture it, a million fist-sized red land crabs making their way down to the sea edge to release their eggs into the ocean over a period of just three hours or so. The Make-A-Wish volunteers looked horrified as I explained it. And I'm typing this now, so yes, I lived, thanks. I wonder what kind of comments OP had to receive to have to write that they are still alive because they wrote this. And I also don't understand why the volunteers looked so horrified when OP wished for this. Maybe I'm just missing something. Story 5. I used to know a dude who got sick in high school, and his wish was to see Rocksteady Studios and be in one of their games. The studio was super cool, evidently, and they put him in Arkham Knights as a GCPD officer. Best part of the story is that he recovered, and last I heard, is still doing okay to this day. Story 6. Glad to see I'm not the only one with this weird request. I was also eligible for Make-A-Wish when I started high school, and I asked to visit DICE at their HQ in Stockholm. I didn't ask to be in any of their games though, dang it why didn't I think of that. I was passionate about game development and still am, and thus wanted to see what it's like to work in a AAA studio, and also ask about a bunch of game dev stuff. They constantly asked me, are you sure you wouldn't rather go to Disneyland? I said, this is my Disneyland. Guess they thought it was a weird request for a 15 year old kid to make. This year I finished my bachelor's degree in computer science and in the future I can hopefully land a job in game dev. Story 7. I was a Make-A-Wish kid back in 2017. And my wish was to go see a live brain surgery in Seattle at University of Washington. I loved Grey's Anatomy. I loved Dr. Shepard and I had brain cancer so I wanted to see what my doctors kinda saw. What an experience, and I learned so much. I was a little neurosurgeon for a day, and the neurosurgeon was playing the Pixies while operating. What a great, happy moment, I won't forget it. They even sent my family from Arizona to Seattle to have dinner with me in the Space Needle. Story 8. When I was on a carrier, they flew a kid and his parents out. They routinely fly distinguished visitors, but we thought it was weird that there was this kid. They got tours and watched flight ops, but he couldn't fly with us, so they asked us to have dinner with him so he could at least meet pilots and ask questions. It was really humbling when we realized that this was what he was there for. He literally wished to just come see what we do and hang out with us. Story 9. I worked at a Lego retail store in the 2000s, and Make-A-Wish approached us for a child with terminal osteosarcoma who wanted to be in the store for a day. Lego unfortunately denied the request, which surprised myself and the rest of the staff because Lego was a pretty great company. Staff decided to honor the request ourselves. We closed the store early on a Sunday, then invited the kid and family in. He had a full run of the store. We collectively paid for like $1,000 worth of toys for him to take home, and just spent the entire evening building whatever he wanted. Unfortunately, he died a few months later. I am also surprised that Lego turned down this request. I wonder why. I feel like it couldn't have just been about money, but I don't know. Story 10. I had a wish when I was 8 due to having leukemia and a bone marrow transplant. My first thought was to meet Bruce Willis. Die Hard was my newly discovered favorite film, but my dad asked if I wanted something that would last like a computer. I always loved playing on the hospital computers, so yeah, I went for that. Best decision ever, and I might even owe my career to it. I hear Bruce Willis is a bit of a jerk IRL anyway. Story 11. I worked at hospice and we had a wishing program. One of our patients, 24-year-old with brain cancer, wanted to hold a sloth. Apparently, sloths are actually very nervous creatures, so it's a little tricky to actually hold one. I found a local company that does visits to schools and whatnot who had a sloth. Sloths only poop about once a week, and the sloth could only travel the day after he pooped. 
because they get nervous, and any longer than that, and the sloth has stress diarrhea. So basically, we had to wait until the sloth pooped and then set up the visit for the next day. The sloth pooped on Thanksgiving, so we set up the visit for the next morning. The patient was able to hold and pet a very sweet sloth. The patient died about three weeks later, and I am very happy I was able to help give her some joy in her final weeks. Story 12. Former employee here. Over half the wishes are Disney-related, and beyond that, they typically fall into a few categories. I wish to travel, I wish to meet, I wish to be, I wish to have, I wish to give, that kind of thing. So I always liked wishes that fell outside of the typical wish categories. One time, there was a boy that wished for the perfect baked potato. I don't know if the wish granters went through with that wish. They may have waited until he was a little older, but I still laugh when I think about it. Volunteers are trained to ensure they are determining the child's one true wish. Not the mom's wish to go on a cruise or dad's wish for new tools, etc. A lot of work and thought goes into fulfilling a child's wish. You know what, I hope that the kid got the perfect baked potato and another wish. I feel like if I were in that opportunity to grant wishes, then that's what I would do. But hey, maybe that extra baked potato just isn't in the budget. Story 13. Not make a wish. But my brother got terminal brain cancer when he was 18. He was given three to six months to live. Back then, his only wish was to be an NFL player. But he was 5'8". All heart. He was just like Rudy in that Notre Dame football movie. He fought for it for six years. Somewhere around his 22nd birthday, he and I were talking about having something worth living for. I told him it didn't matter what it was, but a vision for the future, that he would fight for what was important and encouraged him to find something to give his life to. We went on a vacation soon after that, and because we were broke from medical bills and four years of battling cancer as a family, this was a huge deal. We hadn't had a family vacation for a long time. A family friend put us up in their beach house and gave us some money to have a good time there. My brother came alive on that trip. It was so impactful to him that he came home and decided to start a non-profit organization. He called it A Week Away. It was very similar to Make-A-Wish. Terminally sick patients apply and benefit from an all-expenses-paid vacation with their family or group of caregivers. It was a big deal for him to include the family, because if you've ever gone through something like that, you know it's not just the patient who suffers and loses their freedom. It's everyone they're close to. He worked his butt off to start the organization. He formed it and began sending families to places like the Outer Banks and Ocean City and other East Coast beaches. A week before he died, he launched his first big month-long fundraiser. He passed away knowing that he had raised enough to send like 10 families on respite weeks. It was like he was passing the baton off to others who would keep on fighting. The org is still going strong today. If anyone is blessed enough to have their health and a sweet vacation spot you'd like to donate for occasional use by sick people all coordinated by an awesome organization, I'd encourage you reach out to the A Week Away folks. You get to play a part in people's lives like the awesome people helping in these Make-A-Wish stories. Story 14. This wasn't Make-A-Wish, it was a local radio station. But I swear every single part of this is true. I probably still have the master tape. Around 25 years ago in the mid-90s, in the town I lived in up in the far northwest of Scotland, there was a community radio station. We were trying to set up a local radio station. So we had a six-week run using borrowed equipment from Moray Firth Radio to gauge popularity and interest. Now, the first program in the evening after the news was one run by a couple of high school kids. We'd get a few kids in, they'd record a few idents and stuff, we'd run the idents, then at 5 past 5, their show would go up. Tunes they liked, shoutouts to their friends, that kind of thing. They loved it. They had a blast, just tremendous fun. Now, there was one wee guy who was a wheelchair user who wanted to do a program, but he couldn't get into the studio because it wasn't wheelchair accessible. It was up a long flight of stairs in the old nurse's accommodation in the local hospital. And there aren't many wheelchair user nurses. And certainly not in the 50s when the hospital was built. He couldn't even be carried up the stairs because he had severe spinal problems that meant that his back, chest, and internal organs were pretty squashed. And he had to be moved very carefully. He was one very sick wee boy, and there was no way he was getting up into the studio. He was totally out of luck on that one. No, he wasn't though, was he? because it occurred to me that he could tape his program with one of the portable recorders we had, Little Morant's high-speed cassette recorders. Then he could give me a track listing and I'd cut it together, 
play it to him, and if he was happy, we'd play it out for him. Sure, he wouldn't get to do it live, but next best thing, huh? So we did. I dropped off the tape recorder, microphone, and so on, and a day later or so, I collected it from him with his running order, track list, and a stack of CDs. Perfect. He even sounded like he'd really bashed on his script and sounded pretty damn good. Copy the tape to quarter inch, copy the tunes to quarter inch, edit it down, and boom. Except he had a cold. A snuffy, snottery cold. Every sentence was punctuated with sniffs, snurks, snumps, just snotty noises. I can tell you now just how long a sniff is on tape. And also, cats absolutely love to play with all this brown ticker tape confetti you're flooding the bedroom with, where my editing gear was. And there were dozens of them. 18 hours of cutting, sticking, redubbing, finding a bit of dead air, just the right tone to fill the gap, cutting, sticking. But when his program went to air, he sounded frickin' amazing. So just to save everyone's ears here, I decided to not narrate the like sniff and snark in brackets that he wrote. You're welcome. But also this is just such an amazing story and someone putting in a lot of work to really make a kid's, I don't know, life potentially. Just a nice heartwarming story, which I guess I kind of expected here. Story 15. I used to be a wish granter and one kid wished for his parents to become citizens. They were illegal immigrants, and it was a constant source of anxiety for the kid that they could be deported. Unfortunately, despite the name, Make-A-Wish can't grant everything, and they did try. They got a lawyer and everything, but it just wasn't possible. More than 50% of wishes are Disney, though. Story 16. I was a cancer kid, so know quite a few people who went through the process. I went to Yellowstone to camp and see a wild buffalo. I also volunteered at my local wish-granting foundation. One very young girl wanted to go on a hunting trip. They sent her and her dad to a hunting lodge where she ended up breaking the lodge record for the largest buck ever shot. She wanted the entire thing stuffed. To this day in her house, there is a massive deer, body and all, standing in her living room. Another kid really wanted to eat bugs because he was a really big fan of the Survivor shows. They had a chef come in and cook bugs from all around the world in various ways. He really enjoyed it. I also just want to say that a ton of kids want to go meet a WWE pro wrestler, and they're normally the kindest people. A lot of kids want to meet celebrities, and they only give them five minutes. But the wrestlers? They really try to make an experience. John Cena, in particular, was great. Apparently, Robin Williams was also the best wish granter. He would take the family out to eat, pretend to be the genie, take the kids to stores and buy them things, and if he was in their town, he would even try and visit. I never knew anyone personally that met him, but the president of the foundation said they very much mourned his loss, because he was just so terrific for so many of their kids and their families. As if I needed another story to know that Robin Williams was an amazing human. Celebrities, and really anyone who dedicates their time to Make-A-Wish foundations, are just great people. Story 17. I was a Make-A-Wish child in my province. I've had brain cancer since 12 and still have it today. My initial wish was going to meet the cast from Hawaii 5 in Hawaii, but then I ended up also wanting to get this MSI Aegis pre-built gaming PC. When I told them I wanted that, they said, You sure? Then I don't remember what happened, but it wasn't until I was 16 when I got my wish for a VR gaming setup, and I built my PC at Canada Computers right before the pandemic and the GPU shortage. Feels good, and as of now, my treatment is stable and I've only gone through radiotherapy two times. Only thing is, there isn't much space in my room, so having the base requirements for a VR play area is kinda sad. Hopefully, I can get a bigger area though, because I like playing in VR since it's nice. Story 18. I was a chef at a fancy steakhouse in Jacksonville, Florida. One day, my proprietor came to me and said, This is Stacy, the new girl. She'll be training with you. I look over and it's this adorable little girl in a bright pink chef coat. I babysat my little cousins at the time, so I was actually pretty used to entertaining 10-year-old girls. So I showed her the ropes. We made all kinds of stuff. On the surface, these things were kind of random. Candied bacon, cornbread, prosciutto-wrapped borson cheese stuffed asparagus, a sweet tea brined pork chop, a sorrel garnish salad type thing, and some other cool garnishes. We were having fun. I then made a puree out of the cornbread and let her plate up the dish a few different ways to show how you can play with the ingredients and height to showcase different parts of the dish. She had a blast. 
It was only at the end when the father came up to me in tears that I realized what was going on. In the moment, I was a little upset because no one told me, but I realized after that it was for the best. I probably would not have been seen as bright and vibrant with all the lessons had I known, but it was a fulfilling experience for sure. I hope their family is doing well. Side note, I have reworked and reran the dish as a special a few times in memory of that day. It was that impactful. Oh, it's just so sweet for OP to have a, like, lasting memory of that moment by making the dishes special. That's so cute, and even though no one else knows, it's still, like, a legacy. That's so cool. Story 19. I helped toast a visit to the planetarium by a kid whose wish was to go to the moon. The front office folks thought I could just give her a personal tour of the planetarium and show her some nice high-resolution visuals. But I thought that she deserved better than that. I commissioned a jeweler friend and meteorite enthusiast to make a silver crescent moon necklace, which he graciously donated to the cause, and I donated a small lunar meteorite for my own collection. It was a gorgeous necklace, very much to the credit of my friend's artistry and generosity. We couldn't take her to the moon, so we gave it to her instead. She was thrilled, but later said that her real highlight of the trip was the astronaut ice cream. Ah, kids.